In this video, we're going to learn how to make white stock. So all stock uses the same base. Stock is going to consist of three components. There's going to be the bones that we use, the mirepoix, and the water. So for white stock, we're going to use uh, raw bones. Uh, it's going to be when we get into our brown stock that we're going to roast the bones. Um, white stock can be made with uh, chicken or veal. Um, fish stocks are often white stocks. Today we're going to use uh, chicken. So uh, traditionally, um, a lot of stocks would start by blanching the bones um, before making their stock. Uh, so to do this, what you would do is you would take your raw chicken bones like I have here, you would put them in a stock pot, cover them with water, bring it to a boil, and cook them for a very short amount of time. This would help remove some of um, the, the proteins uh, that would cloud the stock. Um, we are not going to do that today. Um, when you're looking for clarity, you definitely are going to want to blanch your bones. But what's going to happen when I cover my bones in water, in water and bring it to a boil is we're going to lose a lot of flavor. So when clarity is more what you're looking for, I would suggest starting by blanching the bones. But when flavor is what you're looking for, uh, I would suggest not blanching the bones. Uh, the next thing is going to be our mirepoix. We're using standard mirepoix for this, combination of carrots, onions, and celery. Uh, and you're going to match the cut of your mirepoix to the type of stock that you're making. Uh, so you can see here that my mirepoix is cut uh, pretty fine. Uh, this is a, uh, about a large dice. Um, so the reason that these are cut so small is because I'm only going to cook this stock for a couple of hours. Uh, white chicken stock is going to simmer for about two hours. So if I had used a really big piece of carrot, say, which is you know, already a dense vegetable, um, I wouldn't get to extract uh, enough of the flavor from the carrot and it would be wasteful. Um, conversely, if I was making a brown stock that's going to simmer for eight or ten hours, uh, I wouldn't use uh, you know, such a small piece of carrot here. Um, as the carrot would get overcooked, become mushy, uh, and, and cloud my stock and, and almost turn into a puree. So you really want to think, how long am I going to cook this stock for when uh, deciding how big you want to cut your mirepoix? So we went with this uh, large dice today. The last component of our stock is our water. Uh, you always want to start uh, bone stocks with cold water. That's going to help uh, extract uh, the most amount of collagen uh, from the bones that you're cooking. So, uh, making stock uh, is pretty simple. We're going to start with our raw bones here. Put them into our stock pot. Add in our mirepoix. And lastly, we're going to take our sachet and tie it just loosely to the side of the pot. You want to be careful when you're tying your sachet that the cord doesn't come into contact with the flame. Uh, we don't want this to, to catch on fire. Um, so make sure that the, the butcher's twine is, is well away from the flame. And then lastly, we're going to add in our cold water. And we want the water uh, at a minimum to be covering the bones in the mirepoix. All right. I'm going to bring this uh, up to a simmer over about medium high heat. And once we get to that simmer, we'll check back in. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes and our stock has started to simmer. Um, and in addition to our stock simmering, uh, we've also started to see a little bit of scum start to form around the top of the stock. Um, and we talked in the beginning about blanching bones. And when we blanch our bones, we're really going to uh, not have so much scum starting to form as we talked about removing some of those, those proteins and impurities that are going to come to the top. Um, so one of the things we're going to need to do is we're going to need to skim the top of our stock occasionally as it cooks. 
this is also known as dépouillage, so you'll see that uh, that term used, uh, skim the stock or dépouillage the stock, uh, just to remove any fat or scum that accumulates. So you could use a, um, a solid spoon. Uh, I'm going to use a ladle, and all I'm going to do is just put my ladle just down on top of the stock and collect any of that scum that's starting to form or any of that fat that's starting to form at the top. The reason that I want to skim this uh, is that as this stock continues to simmer, if I don't remove the scum from the top, what's going to happen is it's going to fall back down into the stock, continue to cook, and, uh, and cloud the stock even further. So I'm just occasionally going to skim this stock. All right. So uh, we're going to just continue to let this stock simmer. Um, I'm going to check back occasionally, make sure that the temperature is not too high that it's boiling or not too low that it's not simmering. Just make sure I'm keeping it at that nice uh, simmer that I have going on here. You can see just, you know, the bubbles kind of poking through that slow plop, plop, plop. Uh, this stock is going to simmer for about two hours. Uh, and once we've, uh, we've gotten there, I'll show you how to strain this. Stock. All right, welcome back. It's been about two hours and our white stock uh, has been simmering and is looking great. Uh, you can see that uh, the water that was obviously clear like water before has leached out all of these really wonderful uh, colors from the chicken and the vegetables. So now we're going to go ahead and strain our stock. Um, so I'm going to use this ladle and I'm going to strain out my stock. Um, I could have poured the stock uh, out of the pot, but I really like to go from the top with the ladle, especially when I have a nice clear stock like this. Uh, you can see as you look down, um, I have a really nice clear stock. Even though I didn't blanch those bones in the beginning, uh, I did uh, skim the stock or dépouillage uh, as the stock was cooking. Um, so I achieved a pretty clear stock. And if I was to just dump this stock out through the top, um, a lot of those uh, uh, impurities that have settled to the bottom along with the meat and the vegetables uh, would mix back in with the stock. Um, that doesn't make the stock inedible by any means. Um, it's just going to make it a little bit more of a cloudy uh, stock. So you can see as I'm continuing to strain here, uh, kind of pressing down uh, on those spent bones and vegetables. All right. So I'm down to the very end here. Gotten all of the stock out of the pot. Okay, I'm just gonna remove my chinois. Now, as you can see, when you look uh, down to the bottom of the stock pot, there's a fair amount of uh, product left, right? There's uh, some chicken and some vegetables. Uh, and a lot of people ask, well, what can I do with that? Um, and the answer is very little. Um, there is a, um, a method uh, to make something that's called uh, remoulage, uh, which is a, basically a stock that you would make out of spent stock bones. Um, so you would make like this very watery stock out of these bones, and then you would use that remoulage to make your next stock in lieu of using cold water. But the reality is, is that uh, this ch these chicken carcasses and these vegetables have really given us what we need from them. They've given us all this beautiful flavor and color that we see um, here in this stock. Um, and that's what we were trying to extract out of them. So my next step is going to be to chill my stock. Uh, and we'll cover the chilling technique for stock in the next video uh, titled Brown Stock. So let's review. When making a stock, always start with cold water. That's going to allow for the maximum extraction of collagen for a rich stock. Next, when cutting your mirepoix, match the size of the cuts to the amount of time the stock is going to cook. Smaller cuts for a shorter cook time, longer cuts for a longer cook time. Finally, as your stock is simmering, occasionally skim the top to remove any of the impurities and scum that have floated to the top. This will help ensure a nice clear stock in the end.